Welcome to this time of worship at Olivet Moravian Church for Sunday, May 17th. Thank you for joining us, and I pray that God will bless the reading of the words in the Bible and my message to you that you will be blessed by God's Word. Now let us begin with a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to gather each week and share your word remotely. Again, that's wonderful technology that you've given to us that we can still reach our congregation and others, even though we can't come together in the church for worship as we normally do. We continue to pray for all of the issues at hand in our country and in the world with the pandemic. We know that you are still at work in all of this. Sometimes it's hard to see, but may we feel your presence and know that this too shall pass, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that things are going to be different for a while, but that doesn't take our faith away. You can still strengthen us as a community of faith, even though we're apart physically, we can still be in touch through phone and text and email and cards, correspondence. So may we continue to do that as a church family and reach out to one another. And now bless this time of worship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to sing three verses of hymn number 719, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping Thy presence, my light. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my Scripture for the sermon comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Of the twelve disciples, John was the youngest. 
He and his older brother James were the sons of Zebedee, a wealthy fisherman in Galilee. They were among the first disciples chosen by Jesus. John, along with James and Peter, were very close to Jesus. In fact, John refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John was loyal to Jesus to the end. He and Peter were the only disciples to follow Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, after Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. John was the only disciple present as Jesus hung on the cross. It was to John who Jesus entrusted his mother Mary. In fact, John took her into his very own home. John was the first disciple to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. John was the only disciple who lived into old age and did not die a martyr. He lived into his early 90s and died of natural causes. However, John suffered in ways the other disciples did not. He was still enduring earthly anguish and persecution long after the others were already in glory. John suffered the loss of each of the disciples, outliving every single one of them. John was persecuted and banished to the island of Patmos and lived his last years in a cave. It was there that John was given the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he wrote down. Before his exile, John had already written his gospel and epistles. John is often referred to as the apostle of love. The theme of love flows all through his writings. In particular, the epistles of John are about love, how God loves us and how we should love him and one another. In the Gospel of John, while he has mentioned love before, from chapter 14 on, love becomes a central theme. Here in this particular passage, John links together love and obedience. To John, there's only one test of love, and that is obedience. Jesus showed his love to the Father by his obedience, even to the point of death on a cross. Christian love is not just a feeling or emotion. Jesus gives content and substance to the word love. Jesus commands us to love. Because God loves us and he has shown that love by dying on the cross for us, we're to follow his command to love him and one another. Love is more than words. There are many who protest their love with words yet only bring grief and heartache to those they claim to love. Also, many never back up their words of love with actions and deeds of kindness. To Jesus, real love is shown only in true obedience. Yet we know the difficulty of loving one another and being obedient to God's commands. Jesus says to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. He says this to them during their last meal together in the upper room on Monday, Thursday evening. Jesus shared many things with them, preparing his disciples for his upcoming crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. Jesus tells them everything they need to know so that they will be ready when the time came for him to leave them. The main thing he tells them is that when he leaves them, speaking of the crucifixion and later the ascension, he will not leave them alone, but will send to them the Holy Spirit. Even though Jesus would be leaving them in bodily form, the Holy Spirit would come and be with them, enabling them to do even far greater things than they had done while Jesus was still with them. However, for the disciples to experience a true manifestation and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they would have to be obedient to Jesus. Obedience is keeping His commandments. And He's not only talking about the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, but also the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew and when Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. 
There's a lot in the Bible about how we are supposed to live, and they're all commandments, really. You can't pick and choose which things Jesus says are commandments and others which are mere suggestions. But unfortunately, no matter how hard we try, we can never perfectly keep all of God's commandments. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. That is why Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave to save us from our sins. If you've broken just one commandment, you might as well have broken them all. And even if you've committed just one sin without the cleansing blood of Christ, you cannot get into heaven. It is only through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we can be saved from our sins. The most important thing about being a true Christian is having the love of God in our hearts. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So it starts with love. Jesus did not say, if you can keep my commandments, then you will have love for, for me. Truthfully, probably of all the commandments, it is hardest to love one another. Jesus knew how hard it would be for us to love one another. That is why he promised the disciples the Holy Spirit. I think Jesus was saying something like this to the disciples. I'm giving you a hard task and I'm sending you out on a difficult assignment, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit who will guide you and help you to love and keep my commandments. More than anything else, our mother just wanted us to get along and to love and care for each other. The tearful young woman who spoke these words was a new patient in the psychiatric unit of a hospital. She had attempted suicide by taking an overdose of sleeping pills. One of four sisters, she could not live with the fact that her three siblings would not speak or have anything to do with one another. The mother had died without a will. The fighting over the woman's possessions, which ensued after her death, had made adversaries of what was once a very loving and caring family. The rift among the sisters apparently did not trouble the three older sisters, but the youngest was spending the first day of her required week in a locked psychiatric unit. She literally could not live with the fact that her sisters obviously did not care about their mother's last wishes. If you love me, care and love each, care for and love each other. Thankfully, most will never experience this kind of destructive family interaction. We honor our parents by respecting and cherishing the things they care most about. Normally, our parents don't have to say, if you love me, do the things that I teach you. It just comes naturally. When we love our parents, we obey their teachings and rules, and we reverence the things they stand for and value most. But when we do not love our parents, and especially our Heavenly Father, it will only lead to dysfunction, pain, and destruction. But when we love God and obey His commandments, we will naturally love one another. In fact, when we follow God's commandments, His laws will help us show love to each other. God gave us rules so that we will live and love as He loves us. Until a few years ago, there were no laws about child safety seats and automobile restraint systems. I know when I was little, I didn't even sit in a seat. I stood on the hump of the back floorboard so I could look out the windshield. Tragically, many young children were not safely belted in their seats, so they died in car accidents. Today, though, laws prohibit children from riding in a car without a child seat facing in the right direction. Of all the expressions of human love, there is probably no more pure and beautiful love than that of a parent's love for a child. Yet when a child's safety is at stake, it seems a parent's love is not always enough. Parents did not always do what was best for their children. Many parents needed a law or boundary to ensure that their love for their children did not fall short of perfect love. God knows the same is true of our love and devotion toward Him and other people. He knows our feelings are not enough. We needed laws and boundaries in the form of commands to aid us in loving Him and other people fully. 
The question is, do you really love Jesus? Do I really love Jesus? And we all say we love Jesus, but do our hearts and actions show it? Words alone are not enough. During their last supper together, Jesus said to his disciples, you will all become deserters. And Peter said, even though all become deserters, I will not. And then Jesus said to Peter, truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. We know how that turned out. If we truly love Jesus, we will obey his commandments. If we truly love Jesus, we will show it by our actions. We will pray. This is how we talk to God. We will read and study our Bibles. This is how God speaks to us. We will give Jesus prominence in every area of life, and he will always come first. We will come to his house for worship regularly, not just when we feel like it or have nothing else better to do. We will give to God what is rightfully his. We will tithe and give to him first, not last, and only of our leftovers. We will serve God with our time and talents. We will love not only in word, but in deed and action. We will love one another. If we love Jesus, we will keep his commandments. We love him because he first loved us and has shown that love by giving his son for us. We must trust the Holy Spirit and let him truly indwell our lives. Thankfully, we are never alone in this world. Jesus has sent the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with us and guide us. We know that it is not always easy to love one another and keep God's commandments, but we are enabled to love because the gift of the Spirit of truth who dwells with you. Our lives are so much freer when we have love for God and for one another. We will want to keep God's commandments and he will bless us when we do. So make the choice to live each day in love and in fellowship with the Savior. Make the choice each day to live and love and be in fellowship with one another. If we truly love Jesus, then we will keep his commandments. Now I'm going to sing hymn number 589, Oh, Could We But Love That Savior. Oh 